I'm Rebecca Urena and we are here on Behind the Buzz. Joining us today is Maris from Red Fund Capital. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. And for our audience that might not be familiar with Red Fund Capital, could you give us an insight of what you guys do exactly? Red Fund Capital is a Canadian merchant bank. We're traded on the CSC as okay. well as the OTCQB and the Frankfurt Exchange. Um, we came into existence about a year ago and our original platform was to be the first merchant bank in cannabis that funded CBD, medical cannabis, and hemp. And we started off as a debt facility. We provided debts and loans to companies that were already into revenues, not profitable yet, but already past uh, their first stage. And we expanded to get to the next stage, which is where we're at now. We funded uh, seven companies to begin with. We have 13 companies in our portfolio because what we've done is we've expanded to create advisory services for companies, which we found was really important. Infrastructure, helping the companies grow. Once they get past the first stage, they end up with different, different problems, especially with regulation and compliance. And what's the biggest problem you've kind of seen in company growth? Pivoting in the space. I think the, I think the industry changes really quickly globally. Yes. And unlike any other company, there's no history how you pivot. So I think it's about management being agile and being able to move in different directions. Especially in Canada here, where our regulation changes almost overnight. I, mean, I don't want to say overnight, they expand quickly. Companies being able to pivot to go to other global com com countries. In Canada, we've always been about export, even though only 5% of our companies export outside of Canada. Right. In the cannabis industry, we've been about trying to get the global footprint going very quickly. This industry has been moving very fast, especially in Canada, but do you guys plan on maybe expanding in the near future? Yes. We don't have that many Canadian companies in our footprint. We do THC, but we do medical cannabis. So what we've tried to do is be agnostic and non-jurisdictional. Uh, our biggest investment is a company in Colombia that's still private, and they actually have um, a cultivation in hemp in Colorado, but they're a private footprint. And then our next, I actually, I have to backtrack a little. We have invested just recently, uh, as far as an advisory contract and helping the country, company go to the public markets with a company called Wahoopta Ventures. They're probably Canada's largest footprint out of the ground in hemp. And again, they're having a little bit of an of a, um, a little bit of an issue not on their side, but on the Canadian market side, because not a lot of people have gone into the processing of hemp in Canada. Although we're going to the next stage in Canadian regulation, people are st stepping really slowly to get to to the next stage as right. far as the product uh, distribution, as far as the processing. What should people look out for in the company? Anything new that's happening? I think what's exciting with Red Fund is that we convert our debt into equity. We're starting to dividend, we're beginning the next quarter to dividend our equity out to our shareholders. So we're not just keeping it on the company balance sheet, we're going to share with our shareholders. I think that's a different angle than a lot of companies. A lot of companies that are like us that diversify with different footprints and take pieces of companies, keep it on their balance sheet. And for us, it's about our shareholders. We are public. Right. We wouldn't be public if we weren't going to give it to our shareholders. So that will make that'll differentiate us. Of course. Uh, besides that, what differentiated what differentiated us from the beginning was I'm a banker, I'm a woman. Uh, many of the companies here in Canada and the United States, we're starting to see more women that were banking transition to go into cannabis, but they're slow to get involved. This per se and the space itself is still a little bit dangerous, people think, for a woman or um, I would say for people to say they're in cannabis. You know, we backtrack a little, we go forward. But I think that it's an industry and it's a sector that's only going to grow globally. And we hope to get involved because we're listed on the OTCQB. We're looking at projects in CBD, in medical CBD and hemp to get involved in the U.S. for our U.S. shareholders as well. It's great to have a woman inside of that sector representing. The industry has been very open to right. women in the cannabis industry. They haven't been open to as much funding, but okay. Wall Street has always been like that. That's amazing to hear. And thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for of having course, me. Of course, of course. And this has been Behind the Buzz.